today I'll be showing you my Notion setup. So if you guys don't know what Notion is, it's basically a task management platform. Um, but it is, you can use it for a variety of different things and I found it really helpful for managing and planning my content and a bunch of other things in life. Shout out to Katie from Infinite Beauty 7. She shared her Notion setup with me because I was so confused at first with Notion and how it works. It's confusing when you start and I basically took apart her little setup and figured out how it worked and since then I've branched off into other setups on Notion that has helped me with not only content creation but other things in life as well and keeping track of things and just organization for a bunch of different areas in my life. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Alright, so the first setup area I am going to be going through is the to-do setup, but I have it in a few different views. There's all projects, and then all projects is basically a board view, and it has to-do in progress completed someday slash maybe and abandon. So within each to-do item I have a status so you can choose like where it is. You can have a due date. I don't really have a due date. And then you can have like not important, kind of important, super important. Um, but the nice thing about the board view with all projects is you can drag it. So once I'm done uploading the Gumroad, I'll put it in progress or then complete it. So where I see everything. Now if I want to just view the to-do ones, like the ones I have to do, I have a list view where I can just view the ones I have to do or the ones in progress completed. Uh, someday maybe abandoned and archived. So this one is list slash life. So I have a bucket list and this is just one view, so there's no other views. I have the name of the bucket list, activity, I have categories, so like sites and experiences, just for fun, I have a date done, and completed. So again, you can open each individual activity and see it more, and you can add more notes. And then once you're completed, you can check it off. And so that's how I keep track of bucket list items. Then we have yearly goals, um, so again, very similar setup, um, but I do have completed on the left hand side, and then a date completed. Uh, lastly, in the list and life section, I have my wish list. So the gift title, like the color of the gift, this is especially important if it's a clothing item. The price, size, and the type, the store and the link of where to get it. So it has a table view and a gallery view so you can just choose whatever view works for you. And that's what I have in my list and life section. The life and other section also has medical information. Again, this is a template. This is not necessarily um, for me personally. But I have like a diagnosis, a specialty, diagnosis date, and then the medication which translates to the second table of the medication. So you can put up the medication and you can choose like the other name. So the time is per day, when, so you can choose Friday, Sunday, Monday, Thursday, whatever day you take it, the amount and the time, so night or morning, whatever related specialty it is. And you have a gallery view, you have a table view and a list view. So art and design section, this is where I have my photography and if you watched my vlog from September uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th, uh, you know I briefly went over this. So it has the photo shoot section and so the job title is whatever kind of session it is, the date and the contacts and the status. So the status you can choose from idea booked, shot, edited, paid, sent, etc. Then you have the price. Again, it's a template. These aren't my prices. And then the tag. So you can have birthday, sports, senior, wedding, fashion, style shoot, 
wedding or full shoot. Now, the contact section right here correlates with the contact's name on the left hand side in the second table. So Jane is right here. So it matches. It'll sync up with each other. So as you can see, if you go to this page for the birthday and you click on Jane, then you can see the, the information and the contact information for Jane. For photo shoots, we do have categories. So we do have ones where you can sort and filter and just see the paid sessions. So what sessions have been paid, the upcoming sessions for the future, just the sections including weddings, just the calendar view. Also look at it from a board or a gallery point of view too. So for the contact section, we have name, email, phone, and then the shoot type, which correlates to the job title on the first section on the left hand side. Now we have equipment and this is really important when you're packing for a photo shoot. You have all your gear and then I have a packed check box. So once I pack it, it's checked off. And then the tags are, is it, it's a photo camera, a video camera, a microphone, a flash, or props. And again, each thing you can always open up and see and add more notes, which is really important. Then lastly, I have the photography section is the location bucket list. So these are just places I want to go in the future sometime. I like it at the gallery view because it allows me to see the places. But if you open it, you can see the tags. So if it's international or wherever, the address of the location and the location, the country, and then done. And adding an image is what the gallery view shows and again the gallery view is the default view but you can also have the table view um, which is really nice. After the photography section uh, I do have design assets. They'll sort it by all assets, just the logos, just the fonts, or just the images which I have none of. So that's really helpful especially for like keeping track of what fonts you use for what design. Next we're gonna go into the content hub and this is where I'm going to briefly go through how I plan my content with my blog, podcast, and YouTube manager. The managers for all of them are really similar so I'm going to go in depth in the blog one and then I'll just skim over the other ones because they're relatively the same. So in the blog post manager I have uh, the blog post titles and then I have them as a board so you can drag and drop them. So we have them sorted to write, to edit, in WordPress drafts, scheduled, and completed. Within each blog post, we can have the date, the status, the property, or the category. So lifestyle, beauty, productivity, health. Completed on Google Calendar. So I use Google Calendar instead of the calendar on Notion. I just better versed in Google Calendar than the Notion calendar. So you can easily drag and drop to whatever stage the blog post is in. But you can also view it as a table view, which is really helpful so you can see not only the, the title but you can also see the details which you can't see in the board view so the property the status on google calendar and then once it's completed this is how i plan my blog posts and it's really really helpful next i do have an interview category in my blog so i interview a bunch of different people so that's what the blog featured interviews are. So I have scheduled on Google Calendar, which is the first section, the name of the interviewee, the email, the topic I am interviewing them on, the blog post title, the link to the question document I sent them, and if it's completed. For all of my managers, blog post, podcast, um, YouTube, I embed a Google Calendar um, in them. So I brainstorm all my ideas then put them on the calendar, on Google Calendar. I put the Google Calendar in Notion, in whatever manager. For the blog featured interviews, there's also a gallery view. So you can see like all the details and if you want a picture of the person too. So that's really helpful. And then podcast manager is the same idea, except I have to record, to edit, scheduled, completed. And then again, the board view and the table view. So again, I have very similar setup. The, the title of the podcast episode, the episode number, the date it's going to be published, the status, the URL, link. And then if we go to the table view, you can see 
the name of the video, the date, the status, the URL, and then finally the link manager. This is how I manage some of my links. So um, we have categories, which are articles, blogs, links, media. And so if you click on articles, it has school study tips, the link to my blog post, which is an article. If you go to blogs, we have Brianna's bandwagon and the podcast links. It's just like the links I didn't know where, where to put them. So my content shop and shop Pura Vida and media, that is there. And then all links do show up in this section. So um, you can see them. And we also have tags. So you can add within each link, you can add tags. We have productivity, lifestyle blogs, podcast websites, shop, and social. And this is just another way to manage links. Next is the social media hub. And so I have the social media page, which has the default view, which includes the name of the social media, the username, the link to the profile, which I think is really important because when I'm you know, rearranging some of my links on my blog or my milkshake on my Instagram. I'm always looking for my link. So this has the default view, the gallery view, and the board view. I really only use the default view. The Instagram planner um, has Instagram calendar, hashtag database, and design practices. So if I go to Instagram calendar, um, this is blank, but this is because I do use a uh, Google calendar for my Instagram. So I would put the embed link in here. Then we have hashtag database. So this is where I keep the hashtags. So I'll just say Notion. And you can put the count, of the count, how many people use the hashtag, the type, so brand, content, trending, and then the category, how much competition in the hashtag there is. And then we have post link. So once you post and whatever post you use the hashtag for, you can add it. And then lastly, for the Instagram planner, I have design practices, which is just, you know, using the same filter on your photos and just general things on how to aesthetically evolve your Instagram. So for the last section, I have the ambassador hub, which is really helpful. We have a gallery view and we have the default view. So the default view, we have the name of the brand of the shop, the discount code, the ambassador referral link, and a link to the brand of business. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And I really hope this helps you kind of get organized with Notion or just brainstorm ideas for what to put in your Notion. If you have any questions or um, want templates for anything, I can certainly try and do that for you guys. Just leave comments down below and make sure to check out all my links in the description box. I'll see you guys in the next video.